All right, guys. So, welcome to Drunk Physics. We're going to talk about a few ideas here, but first, what I want to go into is waves. Because if there's anything I think about a lot when I drink a lot, it's waves. So, let's look at the function, for instance, sine of pi x. Now, this function has the unique property of having one beat every unit. So, if we call one of these units, this time axis here along the bottom, we call this t equals one second. So it has a beat that goes exactly one crest, then one peak every second. So it has this um, property of being able to also be rationalized into 2 pi x so that it has one beat every second, one whole wavelength every second. Now, if you multiply this by um, by two, you can get sine four x. What you just did is you doubled the period. Okay, so waves are cool in that likeliness that you can talk about things in terms of what do you do to this wave. Okay, so now I want to take two sine of two pi x. Now I just made this wave the wave crests exactly double. That's called amplifying. Um, another thing you can do with waves is change their phase. You change their phase by, no, I want to say frequency. This is frequency here. In these parentheses, is 2 pi is its frequency. So it does 2 pi waves every unit. I can't exactly remember how to say that off the top of my head without looking at it. But waves are interesting in this fact that you can also do something like this. Remove both of these. Now you can add waves together. So you can add waves of two frequencies, sine x. So I go to pi x. Here's your one beat per second frequency. You add this with a wave that is exactly double this frequency. So we'll call it an octave. It's exactly like that in music. So four pi x, you are now looking at an octave on top of a wave. So what it does here is it does this same wave right here once every cycle. So it goes up, down, up, down a little, and then down, and then back all the way up. So it breaks the wave kind of in half, and it turns it on itself, so it's upside down. It's kind of the same thing as like you look at, oh, let's call it a parabola. Let's go with two, no x to the power of 2. So look, you break that, and then you kind of break it in the middle, and it becomes x third. Now you did this uh, inversion here. And that's the same thing you were just looking at, sort of. But it's done periodically. So adding waves is something you can very much do. But the thing is about music is you have waves. So sine of, um, let's say, uh, let's go pi x. Let's go one unit of pi, but let's break this down into a wave that adds some unit of pi over it. So that's 3 over 2 pi. I did that wrong. Something happened. So sine of 3 pi over 2. Sine. 3 over 2 pi x. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So what I just did is I took this 1. There should be a 1 here. So if you put a 1 here, which is exactly not what I was wanting to do, 1 pi x, you get the same graph return. So what I just did is I added a wave of it with an interval of 3 over 2. That corresponds in music to a perfect fifth. Now what I can also do is in the middle here, I can add sine of, I want to say 5 over 4 pi x. Hold on, it's going to work itself out here and make a nice neat little pattern. There. Now you add waves together. This is called the, uh, the superposition principle. What I've just demonstrated here, I just made a major chord. See where the see where the wave uh, re starts repeating itself. It starts here, and it starts repeating itself after eight units. So 
what you just came up with here is a standing wave. You zoom in here and you take this one little section here and you can see the entire motion of the wave almost like it kind of cuts off a bit because you have all this stuff up top in the way and I really kind of forgot to consider that before I started this video so you probably know what I was just doing in the background on swag bucks. So what you do when you broke. Um, the superposition principle here is a neat trick of physics because it it yields an underlying principle of physics where you can add waves to each other. They add together linear. They make a linear superposition, which is add, add, and add another wave. So this here, this uh, sine of 5 over 4 pi x, so you have your 1 pi x. That's your single multiple of pi x, which gives you that kind of unit graph I just showed you. It actually needs to be 2 pi x to have a full wavelength in one unit of time, but it serves just as well to do it the way I showed you. Because now you're seeing what happens when you have a uh, kind of whole number, what do, you, what do you want to call it, rational number intervals? You can do the same thing, you can add a seventh to this, uh, a musical seventh. I don't remember the exact ratio, I think it's 9 over 8, but I don't want to do it and make myself look, no, 9 over 8 I think is a major second. Either way, it's some it's some rational number uh, ratio of a wave you're adding to this one. But notice the periodicity of this wave. When you trace it like this, you trace it, oh, watch it do its thing. The waves bounce three times, and then they invert and become the same wave. Only this peak here happens here. This peak here happens here, this peak here happens here, and these two peaks invert. So if you were to flip this section of the wave right here, you would get this exact wave. But that's why the wave works, is because it inverts what happens on the other side of its wavelength, and it happens again, it flips around. That's why I like waves. So let's uh, let's consider another thing. Let's What, what happens if you add... Um, Amplitudes. So let's go 2 sine x. Okay, so that's a wave with double amplitude of your regular sine. It has its peaks at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, like any other wave does. But then you add 1 plus sine, no, 1 sine x. Anybody care to guess what's going to happen when I push this plus sign? Is it going to be a wave that's double the amplitude, or is it going to be 1 plus 2 sine x? Well, let's put it in. This is what happens. Now, notice where the peaks are. These, the peaks are at 3 pi over 2. Instead, we're here, you had the 2 over, or 2 sine x, you had the peaks at 2. It was a smaller wave, but the reason what happened is that 1 plus 2, in parenthesis, sine x. Notice it's the exact same wave. It just overlapped that same wave in red. So you just added amplitudes. So when you add amplitudes together, it's like having the same wave, but slightly louder added to it, and it becomes one wave. That's the cool thing about waves in general, is that when you add them together, they tend to wobble with each other to become one wave that acts differently. That's related to something called a Fourier series, but we're not going to go into that because I have one little graphing thing open here. Um, right, I'm going to make this full screen. This is going to be nicer to look at, I think, in general. Um, so, why does this have to do anything with physics? Well, physics, you well, know, F equals MA. Yay, so that's physics. Then is your physics wave problem, or physics uh, Newton's, I want to say it's the first law. 98% certain it's the first law of motion, which states that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration that it possesses. So you're going to need to push on something with the same amount of force as the mass multiplied by its acceleration to give it one unit of acceleration. Then, 
okay, you extend this to waves, now you have an entirely different wave equation, but it's built off of that same principle. Now, waves have this interesting little thing of wanting to go down when they're going up. So when you have a wave going up, the first thing it's going to want to do is go all the way back down as far as it was up. So you start here, you pull the wave all the way up. The first thing it wants to do is go here. And then it wants to go back here, and so forth and so on until it dies. And that's a damped wave equation. So we can look at damped waves. So E sine x negative E to the power of x sine x. I think I just did the exact opposite thing I was wanting to do. <sighs> See, this is what happens. You forget what you're trying to do. Negative E sine I don't remember how to do damp waves. This might be the next thing I do here. Um, the point is, you can add waves together. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 2. Okay? But that's not how waves add together. They add together in such a way that when you put them out of sync, sine x plus sine 1 half x, There we go. And it did the same thing, where it starts to cancel itself out, and then it picks back up again. So when you zoom in here, you notice what's happening when you start to see the wave at its inflection point, which is right here. So this is one whole wavelength. This is where this returns back to its ground state at zero. It does here in the middle because it cancels itself out in the middle of its wavelength because you're dividing its wavelength by half. Now you multiply Multiply that same wavelength and the opposite happens. It does the same thing but in reverse. So now you have the peaks preceding the trough. I think I said that right. Yeah. No, you still have the peaks preceding the troughs. But the wave... <laughs> That's another quaint, another quaint question. What is the difference between these two waves? So, let's add sine x plus... plus 2 sine x. I did something wrong. No, that's that's adding amplitude. Sine of 2x. I did the wrong. So, when you look at what you got out of that, now the wave is just wider. This is one whole wavelength. Whereas one wavelength completed here for this function one wavelength completes in twice the time when you add twice its wavelength. So it does the same thing it did here. You got a peak, the peak comes down to another minimum, goes back up to another local maximum, and then reaches its global minimum again before doing it all over again. But if you condense that into a shorter period of time, you get the same basic idea. So what if I multiply this? What if I do this? 1 half sine x. I'm going to basically divide them. So it's basically the same thing added together. And I did the same thing I just messed up before again. 1 half x. Oh, sometimes this doesn't work the way I want it to. Sine of quotation 1 over 2 exit brackets X. Yes. So now it becomes the same wave again. See what just happened there? And it's a pretty easy thing. Um, so we just saw adding frequencies and amplitudes together, and we got really in-depth into what adding two amplitudes can do together, but now let's put in some nonsense numbers. Okay, let's add 2.483 sine... no. Got to do it again. Keep doing it backwards. 2.483x. Alright. So there's one wave. Now we're going to add it to some other random wave. 
uh, sine, uh, somewhere between 1 and pi. So let's go with, like, basically almost pi over 2. So, like, sine of 1.57x. Now, what just happened is really interesting here is because these numbers are very, very close to each other, and that I didn't choose that like that on purpose. But they happen to be in a fairly... You only get three minimum. You get a maximum, a minimum, and another tiny, tiny maximum here because it's only just a little bit out of step. And then you go back to your minimum again, and then the wave will soon repeat after... Now, where is one wavelength complete? I think one wavelength completes... Yeah, right here. So there's 13.952, but it takes longer for this wave to repeat. That's what you did by expanding its polynomial, by giving it uh, a different ratio that's slightly less than um, accurate whole number, uh, whole number divisor, you know, 3 over 2, 5 over 4, those whole number ratios. So this is some, you know, 2 over, or uh, 2 times 1 over 483 to get that. And then 1 times 1 over 57. Or, I don't know, that's not correct at all. Like 57 over 100. 1 times 57, no, 1 plus 57 over 100. 2 plus 483 over 1,000. So it's, it's a weirder ratio. And so you get this weird little minimum, you get this maximum occurring here, which is far less than the minimum that directly proceeds or comes after it, but so you have more inflection points. When you have more inflection points on a wave, you basically just have a longer wave. And it takes the wave longer to do the same thing it just did again. Like I said, here you have 12.4. Where, where were we at before? Like 8 units? So now let's see what happens when you add two waves so, no, we're going to go sine x plus 2 sine x. We already did that, but now let's modify the frequency by doubling it. No, not 21 times and doubling it. So basically what we just did here is we make this wave from here to 2 pi. This whole wave is with its inflection point here. So now you have the same kind of idea, but now the wave gets bigger at its peak, diminished by some factor here with the frequency, and then the wave falls off to a smaller peak, which I think is exactly half the size. 2.7, 1.327. 2.7, 1.327. Somewhere like half the frequency here. So those are your peaks. The peaks are somewhere like half the size of the trough or the two peaks, the two local minima, or maxima here, the global minima and the global maxima are like two times. So you're starting to see this little quality of waves come out of just playing with this. I've done this for a while in my spare time. But now let's add some weird integer. What happens when we flip it twice? Now we triple the frequency. Now you have... Well, let's take a step back. Let's make it now we're adding triple the frequency. So now you have the same thing. It's kind of like a saw, saw blade where it's like on one side and at 2 pi it repeats itself again. But now you have more minima and maxima. See how that worked? And then it does it again here. This exact same wave we have right here that I just did is done from 2 pi to 4 pi. And again, and it keeps doing it over and over. But now you've added three points of, or no, two points of inflection by tripling the frequency. So you have a point of inflection here, and then you have a point of inflection here. And then it inflects back into its original curve, and it keeps repeating itself. So let's do it again. Let's add three points of inflection. So now you have a point of inflection here. Well, let's let's do it now at six point. We have a point of inflection here, 
it's it, it starts getting harder to talk about when you start adding more and more overlapping harmonics. What if I added the same thing of 2x? Okay, so we're going to add yet another note, so to speak, to the chord. What just happened here is we still have the same inflection point. The main inflection point happens here. But then you have this inflection point as well. But then it starts inflecting here. I mean, you have inflection points all over the place where they start going down and coming back up and basically doing new things. That's the cool part about waves is that they have that tendency to just do that. So now let's take a step back and look at all of this as far as it has to do with like physics. Why is this physics? Why does this matter? Well, when it breaks down all of mathematics and all of the universe is broken down into waves. So then I have, uh, let's call it a particle with twice the mass, twice the mass, the exact same wave particle, but it has, but it's added with a particle that vibrates with, let's say, uh, twice the frequency. So then you get this standing wave pattern. I mean, I, that doesn't really mean anything in physics, but it starts to illustrate a bigger principle here, is that everything is just waves added on top of itself. They're waves. You have a wave for light. All light is made out of electromagnetic waves that obey um, a, a few simple laws. There's several laws that have to deal with, but Maxwell's equations are the first ones. And I could write that out, but I, I will save that for another time. Uh, I kind of forgot where I left off. I just paused for a second. But um, wave physics takes up a great deal of physics. There's a lot of things you can do with waves because waves are, you know, RLC circuits. They are um, gravitational waves, waves here, tidal waves, waves everywhere. Everything is waves. Really, when you start looking at it that way and you start thinking about life in terms of waves, and peaks and troughs, where sometimes you're going to have peaks meeting troughs. But when you have up, it always wants to come down as far as it went up. And then it's always going to want to bounce back up. That's the whole point of waves. So I can imagine many, many places in physics where that kind of thinking is highly relevant. But... I think I've ranted on about, you know, waves and showed you enough graphs for long enough that you're probably not interested anymore. So, this has been the pilot episode for Drunk Physics. And if you like this, let me know, because I'll make many, many more of them. Because I have many, many more of these to drink before I die. Take care, and if you like what you hear, buy me a beer.